And so now that we've manipulated that function curve, you'll know that the wall slides in slowly and then snaps to the ground. Of course, we didn't change the, the reciprocal side to the animation, and so it leaves a little bit more casually than it arrives. And uh, that's maybe not all that bad, uh, so that the composition doesn't look exactly the same on both sides of the, uh, the center line here of the animation. So each of the items in the model um, that have been grouped together can be moved into and out of the scene in the same fashion. So thus far I've been using mostly set key for all of this. We'll turn it on one more time and set a key here at frame 60. We'll be certain that we have a frame, a keyframe here for this set at frame 120. I want this to arrive by frame 74. So we'll set a keyframe there as well. Likewise, we want this to arrive by frame 106 on the opposite side. We'll set a key here. So in terms of pulling this off stage so that uh, it sits off stage and off camera all the way through frame 60 and then begins to move on, um, let's just look at the um, alternative method of auto key. And with auto key turned on, all I have to do is simply change some value on this. In this case, I'm translating it um, in the x direction. And we see a key here has been established. Now, of course, this is different. And 60 to 74 um, have both the same set of values. So we'll come to frame 60. And we'll right click. And I'll steal the value from frame 0. And now we should see that uh, this actually sits here flat, not making any change. And then from frame 60 to frame 74, it slowly slides onto the stage. And of course, in the reciprocal direction, uh, we see no change because we haven't set anything up there different. Um, so at frames 120 and 180, we want the, the same value that's on 0 to be parked there. So the animation is from 106 to 120. It goes from being on stage to being at whatever the offstage value is, which is zero. And uh, let's right click and we'll steal the value from zero. And we'll also park that on frame 180 so it stays put. And there we go. So now we should see if we play this, let's go ahead and turn auto key off. We should see that um, both the wall and the ramp slide in. Just a few more key items in the timeline. You will notice when the animation plays, both the ramp and the wall arrive on the scene at approximately the same time. They also depart at the same time. I'd like to actually shift this a little bit. So if we come back to um, our main timeline here, we can select the ramp, and you'll notice that the keys are revealed inside the timeline. And we can very easily grab these and shift them. You'll notice if I click on it with the uh, left mouse button, we can click and drag this. And I want to reposition this over about seven frames from where it is. And then likewise, we're going to do the same on the opposite side. So maybe this um, completes its cycle on the back side at 130 and starts it at 150 on the opposite side. What we should see now is uh, just simply by scrubbing, we're going to see that first. And then the everything thing converge um, at this point at the same time. Now, one other point that I should raise, we have yet to look at uh, the dope sheet mode with respect to setting up the animation. I'm going to go ahead and delete the keys on this side, and we can either do that right here in the timeline. You could simply right click, and we could delete the key, and we could delete all the information that exists here, or we could select certain pieces. And uh, go ahead and delete um, all of this information. Now we just have keys for the ramp on the front side, so it's off stage, it's and then nothing more happens with it. Let's take a look at the ramp inside the dope sheet. So if I go to the curve editor and uh, we can see the function curves that make up the ramp, uh, the ramp's axis of rotation actually is out of alignment with the ramp so we're actually getting values, uh, translational values for both the X and Y uh, on the ramp because of this. Uh, not to worry. But um, if we move into the dope sheet mode, you'll notice that the keys for the ramp, if we look inside the ramp object and inside transform and inside position, we'll see the keys for the ramp exist right here. 
So what we want to do is take advantage of Dope Sheet in this case to build the other side of the animation without having to set it up through um, incremental key positioning and adjustment of the function curves and so forth. We can move to select time and once that time is selected we can copy that time to the clipboard, move to some point in the future and then paste that time. And when we paste it we want to paste it absolute. Once pasted, you'll see the same exact keys on this side that we have over here. So what would happen now is the ramp would slide in, stay put, then would animate all the way back to its um, initial value of zero and then slowly slide back out here. What we really want to have um, happen is this portion of time, let's go ahead and select it again, we want to have it um, inverted. So if we look up here in the tools, we can find a place where we can reverse time. And once reversed, then we can select the move keys and we'll hover over the last key here in the sequence and drag that all the way out to frame 180. And now we've completed our cycle by virtue of using the dope sheet. If we should go ahead and close this now, you'll notice that uh, we have keys now placed in the timeline that correspond to the um, mirroring of the first part of the ramp uh, animation sequence and if we scrub the timeline we see that the ramp pulls out and then the ramp leaves the composition. And of course once you've uh, set up the animation for all of the elements inside the model file then you attempt to retrieve some output and you're looking for as a first pass a 320 by 240 MOV and if we come to our rendering setup we'll make certain that we're getting the full active time segment we'll be certain that um, we're using a resolution that's 320 by 240 for our first pass here we'll be certain that we've assigned a file type here that is a digital video file type and so we'll select uh, MOV and you can give it a name when it uh, goes to save this for compression type you want to use uh, MPEG-4 video is optimal or H.264 uh, is actually a really great compression you're not going to see much loss there and the frame rate of course is 12 frames per second and we can likely go for best quality on this and we can click OK and once that's done if you proceed to render then uh, 3D Studio is going to render out um, every frame and package it up inside an MOV saved to this file name